We are certainly into the next chapter of this fight against COVID-19 coming up on the official start of fall. Uh, we also have a new booster out there. The White House COVID advisor actually urging people now get that new COVID booster by Halloween. Let's ask Upstate Global Health Director Dr. Stephen Thomas. Dr. Thomas, why is it so important to get boosted sooner rather than later? Yes, yeah, good to see you, Jeff. Uh, yeah, so I think there's a couple reasons. The first is that uh, you know, in the fall and in the winter, people start gathering indoors, right? And so we don't have the benefit of uh, outdoor ventilation. We don't have the benefit of the sun. We don't have the benefit of kind of natural distance in between one another. So the risk of infection is going to be higher. Uh, what we have seen in the last two years is that right after Halloween, we start seeing huge spikes in infections, which I think goes along with that. So what you want to do is try to plan so that you have about a two week period between vaccination and that high risk period. So it gives your immune system a chance to really increase levels of antibodies uh, to maximize protection. Um, besides protecting yourself, so that's going to certainly help you if you were to contract the virus. Uh, how much can we smother this virus if a lot of us get vaccinated in the next few weeks? Can we kind of really stamp this thing down a little bit from circulating as much like you talked about? We see those peaks the last couple of years. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting how far we've come, right? Remember in the very beginning of this uh, pandemic, everyone was talking about herd immunity and that sort of thing. And I think we quickly realized that that was not uh, uh, that was not a concept that probably applies to this uh, to this respiratory virus. Uh, you know, we don't really make vaccines with the intent of trying to prevent infection or with the intent of trying to prevent transmission from one person to another. It really is just such a very high bar. Um, but that being said, we hope for that effect. And with these vaccines, although it's not great, there is potential for these vaccines to reduce a person's ability to transmit to somebody else. And so it just makes sense that if you have lots and lots of people in a, ge a defined geographic area getting vaccinated, uh, then the overall risk of transmission from one person to another is going to be less. And you know, as, as we know, we still have hundreds of people every single day in the United States dying uh, from COVID. And so if we can even prevent one infection from occurring, uh, it could potentially save a life. Uh, I, I've read some things, certainly I'm probably not as schooled as you are in this, but about um, the ability of a nasal vaccine being studied that could potentially stop COVID. Doesn't seem like there's a lot of urgency there. Is there a reason for that? Is this a such thing that we could see a nasal vaccine at some point that could stop people from actually getting it? Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, this is a, a, a method of delivering vaccines that people have been kind of dabbling in over a number of years. And we've had we've had at least one vaccine on the market, uh, Flumist, which mm -hmm. is an influenza vaccine, which is delivered, uh, which is delivered intranasally. Um, so it's not like it's a foreign concept just from a technology perspective, uh, but it has not been widely adopted uh, until now. And so there are lots of groups who are looking into delivering vaccines uh, uh, through the nose, which really kind of makes sense when you think of respiratory viruses or respiratory infections where people are getting exposed to them. Uh, primarily, it's in the nasal passage. So if you can have really high levels of, of immunity in that first location that you in, uh, encounter the virus, uh, then there is potential that you can uh, either prevent infection or do a better job at protecting people and maybe even do a better job at uh, making someone less infectious to another person. Going to look at some of the numbers quick with you. We've seen nearly 700 cases in Onondaga County last Wednesday through Friday, so three days. The past three, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, another 543, roughly 1,200 then over that stretch. How much of this might be related to kids back in school with no COVID protocols? Is it that and other things on top of it? Are we starting to hit that fall surge already? Yeah, so I think uh, I think you nailed two of them. So it's it's people not wearing masks and people really not physically distancing much anymore. Um, it's all of the dropped uh, precautions in terms of gathering in restaurants and things of that nature. Uh, it's the fact that immunity does wane, both immunity from natural infection as well as immunity from vaccination. And so the further people get out from their uh, primary series, the first two doses or their booster doses, whether it's their third or fourth dose, uh, you know, that's, that's gonna be a, a thing, the fair, uh, kids back in school. So I think it's all of it. Uh, I think it's all of it together. You know, the good news is, though, because uh, I've watched these numbers, at least for a couple of the hospitals uh, in central New York every day, those numbers are kind of staying steady. So the number of people in the hospitals is, is kind of staying steady. Um, and and that's a good that's a good thing.
Dr. Thomas, we appreciate your time as always. Thank you very much. We'll see you again really soon. Thanks a lot.